I started at nine years old smoking cigarettes and drinking uh, beer. And then about the age of 13, I, I, had, I smoked my first marijuana cigarette. And then from there I went on to about 16, I did my first line of cocaine. And uh, then like 17, 18, I started doing the acid trip and the, and the magic mushrooms and, and just progressed farther and farther as I got older. And it seems like it was easier for me to uh, go get a high and drunk than cope with the dealing with what I had to do. I actually uh, dropped out in the eighth grade, but I, in my ninth grade year, I didn't enroll until third quarter. And the principal asked me where I'd been. I said, I've been on vacation. He said, well, you might as well stay there. Well, I stayed down with a friend of mine in, in Belton, Missouri. And um, we, uh, I was a uh, Christmas, uh, uh, 2011, I, I was, uh, uh, I rang the bell for the uh, Salvation Army. And um, they, where I was staying at, they had dope dealers <laughs> right across the street and right next door to us. So we didn't have to go far to get our dope. I got high, and, and me and the person, my friend, we, uh, we got into a big fight, and uh, they, his, I, I kind of like choked him out, and um, his wife and told me to, I, had to, I had to leave, and so she called the police, so I just, I just grabbed my two fists of whiskey and, and my bag of meth and started walking down the highway. But when I got up there at 87th Street, I kicked this can, and underneath the can was a big mound of asphalt and asphalt. And when I kicked that, I hit that, I kicked that asphalt, and I sh and all my toes just pulled back and just broke all my toes, and and uh, I ended up on the ground and and almost got run over by a semi. They, uh, I had a phone, cell phone, and I called the am I called the fire department, 911, and they sent an ambulance and the fire truck. They thought I was in a car, and, and I overturned because I was, I was, I was way out there. I was. I, it's a miracle I didn't get ran over. And uh, so they uh, they took me to uh, a research hospital, and uh, they said there wasn't nothing they could do with your toes being like like they were and everything. As soon as they took my boot off, my foot just went boom, just swelled right up. They. Uh, so they gave me a, uh, they gave me some Demerol and some other pain medicine, and uh, they told me I couldn't stay there. So I started eating a bunch of pain medicines to OD, so I knew they could keep me there. But uh, they get this nurse came back in and she gave me this list of homeless shelters, and she said, "Try to call one of these here because you cannot stay here." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm going to stay here, all right, you know." Because I started eating, like I said, I just started eating the pain pills and. And that, uh, so I started thinking, well, yeah, maybe so. So I called this one first mission, and I don't remember the name of it, but they they just took up the phone and hung them back down on me. And so I uh, called a second one and said they didn't have no room for me. And this is December 27th at this time, or December 26th when this was going on. And I, so I just started eating some more painkillers, and and then. Uh, uh, something said to uh, look at the list again, you know, and, and uh, so I looked at the list and I turned the page and down at the bottom it said City Union Mission in great big letters and I called them and they said come on down, we got a bed for you. So I told them what the, I told uh, the person on the phone that I, I'm all messed up, I, my, I got a broken foot, I'm on crutches. He said well we'll have two big guys. Carry you, carry you in. I said, well, they told me I only weigh 132 pounds at the time, and um, they said, okay, we'll have one big guy come carry you in. So I slept through the whole next day, pretty much, until like in the late afternoons, and uh, uh, I went. I had to go to chap. I went to the chapel, and I'm like, my foot was killing me, and and I didn't. I, I hated myself. I, I didn't want to be. I was ready to end it. I was ready to just call it quits. And the um, what happened was a a pastor came through the chapel, and I'm I got my I got my pain medicine dumping out. I'm thinking how many should I take? And this and one of the preachers came up, you know, named Michael Mike Mike Durst, and he looked at me and he said, "You all right?" And I said, "Nope." and
I just took a handful of pills and uh, he said, can I pray for you? And I said, yeah, I guess. You know, wouldn't hurt. So he prayed and what, uh, when he pr- after he got done praying for me, uh, I didn't get high. I wasn't, uh, all the pain pills that I took, I didn't get high. You know, and uh, I'm like, wow, you know, there's, there's, what, there's something wrong. And I had a half pint of whiskey in on me that I snuck in. I drank that, didn't even get drunk. Didn't, you know, it made me sick, actually. And uh, Mike Durst told me about the Christian Life Program. And uh, he, met, uh, he introduced me to John Davis, was my caseworker at the time. And uh, we, uh, we talked, and he told me what everything the mission, the Christian Life Program could do for me. And, um, and I said, well, I think I want to try it. I think, I'm, I think I need this. I, I, I don't really want to die. So uh, that's when the paperwork started in on for the Christian Life Program. And uh, the next day, the, uh, the, the, on uh, the, 20th, the day, the 27th, December 27th, I went over and had my interview with all the staff, the whole, the, the, all of everybody. And they asked me why I want to be there. And I said, I need to change my life. I need to, I need to do something besides dr- drinking and drugging and trying to kill myself all the time for I hate myself. And they had a little, they had a little a meeting afterwards and they invited me in. Then on January 3rd, I, came to, uh, I went to the City Union Missions Christian Life Program. They signed me a bed. I had, I had never, I slept so good. The first night there, I, I, it was just, I just couldn't believe how much I, I felt like a new man the next day. And then I uh, had to do an, what they call an intake with the nurses over at the City of Union Mission. And they, um, I, I met, that's where I met Joanne Francis. And uh, I was beat up. I mean, my, I had road rash all on the side of my face where when I kicked that asphalt, I fell down and hit my face on the, con- on the asphalt. And uh, they just, I, I had crutches. My foot was all swelled up really big. And, and they, you know, I was afraid they were going to take my toes from me. But uh, Joanne did my intake. And... Uh, she asked me a lot of questions, you know, and I told her what all the drugs I'd done. I, sh- I shot, I shot a lot of cocaine. I shot a lot of heroin. Uh, my old saying used to be, "You put a drug in front of me, I'm going to do it, as long as it ain't birth control or heart medicine." Well, now I'm taking uh, blood pressure medicine, <laughs> so you know that wasn't too good of a thing. Uh, our our classes start at 7:30 in the morning and it goes to 8.30. Then from 8.30, we, had, we, we get assigned a, a prayer group. Well, at two o'clock, they have, a, uh, it's called the Learning Center there at the Mission. We have uh, computers and, uh, and they had, uh, this lady named Joyce Humphrey, she's a, uh, she's a very special lady. She, she, helps, she helps guys like me uh, be able to read. She, she has a class, it's, it's called Hooked on Phonics. And, I, and I'm, pr- I'm getting pretty good looking words up now. But this hooked on phonics, uh, uh, when Joy started with me, she, uh, we, we started at a second grade level. And we worked all the way up. And within one year's time, I learned how to read at 12th grade level in a year's time. Uh, she, I think she was more proud of than what I was. But <laughs> time, we have a journal. Also, I have another journal that we do. It's called Time with God. And uh, I had done the book of uh, Ezra. I done the, I had wrote uh, the whole chapter, 14 chapters out of Ezra. Uh, I done the whole book of Luke, 24 chapters. Is what what we do. We 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 what I I I started in chapter one, verse one. Uh, I would write. I wrote the whole book out by hand, and then I would uh, I would have a uh, observation. 
what, on, on, that, on that part, like I would write maybe four or five verses and I would have the observation of that. I would have questions of what, why Jesus had done this. And then uh, I would have uh, my prayer, what it, where I would, how I would pray for, what would, what would God want me to do if I was there? And um, I feel um, on the on the book of Luke, I, I filled up five notebooks from your Sunday school uh, people, um, Linda and and Bob and 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 Roy and Alberta and and it's just that uh, they 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 send me uh, letters and they uh, they send me cards for encouragement. You know they uh, they uh, they. They ask Johan every Sunday how I'm doing, and you know they they really care about me, and I and you know it's been a, it's been a long time, Nathan, that that I had anybody that that really cared for me, that that um, that that sincere, you know, not say well we you know we we care about you, but two seconds later they're talking bad behind my back, you know, and I know they and, and I know your all group your Sunday school group don't do that. Just because of the, I know how the, the encouragement I, um, that they give me. Uh, uh, Roy, he, uh, <laughs> David Roy, he, uh, he, 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 he sent me a card one time, and it, and then he, on, and then on, inside of it, he said, it says, "Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me." And I sing that at, in my work therapy sometimes, because <laughs> I get, I get so, I get, I, I start thinking about bad things, you know, stupid stuff, and and wh- why did I even do things like that? When I start thinking like that, though, I start, I, I sing that song, and that gets me out of that stupidity mood and get me back in the, in the right frame of mind where I need to be. And uh, it's just, uh, I'm so grateful that uh, I met Joanne and, and you through, through Joanne and in and, and, and your Sunday school class. You all have done so much for me. I, I got a smile now that it's just, <laughs> my, my family, <laughs> Uh, on my dad's side, they 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 don't even know it's they 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 got to pinch yourself to see that it's really me, because they seem to change in me. They see the uh, uh, like my one aunt on my mom's side. She just says I glow, and I'm like oh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> She's like, oh look at you, you got teeth. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I said, I said I've been adopted by a class in Northland Cathedral and. Um, they uh they they set me up with a beautiful smile, and I mean a beautiful smile. Joanne, she's she's kind of like my mom, you know. She she just tells it like it is. <laughs> and I I just like that. But she you know she just uh, she just tells me you know keep keep my head up and and stay 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 strong, be strong. Don't 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 let don't let the devil get victory over you. And I try and I and I. And I ask the Lord each morning when I get up, thank you, Lord. You know, today's going to be about you and not, 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 not the devil.